Facial recognition technology could enslave mankind like never before. Um, Advertise is the latest tool to give shoppers more convenience. They always sell these things as if, oh, we're only trying to help. Advertise is the latest tool to give shoppers more convenience. Facial recognition comes with deep cost to privacy and security. By the way, can anyone remember Silicon Valley asking for permission to use your face? The article asks quite rightly. Uh, mankind has long feared that some totalitarian state, as vividly described by visionary writers like George Orwell, Aldous Huxley, etc., will ultimately arise and enslave him uh, and them in an inescapable technological dystopia, which is, of course, the plan. However, it's not usually the technology and inherent neutral force which most people fear. The deep distrust is directed at the shadowy individuals behind the curtain who may be tempted to use their tinkering prowess for ulterior motives like crushing human freedom underfoot. Consider, for example, how futurists warned of the day when consumers would voluntarily line up for the pleasure of being microchipped so as to more efficiently access the matrix with a magical wave of the hand. Well, that drop of derangement has already seen the light of day. The technology injected under the skin was thought to be the end game, the so-called mark of the beast, according to some apocalyptic critics as far as personal freedom is concerned. Unless human beings submitted to being electronically chipped, the doomsayers say, they would be barred from engaging in vital social activities, including shopping, banking, or the internet, in effect, a death sentence. Um, well, actually, um, the microchip that you can see is the least of the agenda for technological AI control of humanity. It's the technology you can't see, the nanotechnology chips that are, are actually um, uh, the, the, the real deal in terms of human perceptual control uh, and other forms of control. So the article says, today, however, with radical advances being made in the field of facial recognition technologies, it looks like uh, as though the promising chip has met its match. It was always going to, the one you can see. In a recent article by Market Watch, a new frictionless consumer dawn is on the horizon, where cumbersome accessories like wallets and purses, together with the outdated cash and credit cards they hold, will be replaced by a payment scheme known as the biometric mobile wallet. Sounds like the ultimate gift this holiday season, right? Well, think again, it says. First of all, the name of the technology is very misleading since there is no leather billfold to wrap up and place under the Christmas tree. That's because the system works off an individual's distinctive bodily features, face, fingerprints and retinas. In other words, the ultimate face control. As to be expected, the article heaps boundless praise on the technology, which is on the verge of going live. Soon, harried shoppers will no longer have to fumble around in their purses to find their credit cards. Just stare blankly at the end score, in store rather, um, facial recognition machines, and you're on the way. Uh, in addition to that small convenience, it provides the consumer. Um, it also uh, has uh, advantage, added advantages of making people spend more money since the frictionless transaction gives the illusion and potentially a dangerous one uh, that considering the US consumers outstanding debt burden that no dirty money has traded hands. Still, something doesn't feel right, the article says. Perhaps it has to do with the summary of the article, which says that the deployment of facial recognition will remove the last physical barrier between our bodies and corporate America. I felt the urge to take a very hot shower after reading that line, the writer says, and later in the same article, the creep factor went into overdrive with a similar quote from Aran Sinrich, Associate Professor of Communication Studies at American University. He said, Every technological necessity exists in the real world and is used commercially. Um, it is a neoliberal takeover of the human body. And um, 
as people will know who've read my books, that's what I've been warning about for decades. So um, that's where we are with uh, that. Um, and while this is proceeding, the same death cult, what I call the Sabbatean Frankists in the book, and explain why I call them that. It's an amazing story. Um, they are controlling, obviously, what they're doing, but what they're also doing, because they own Silicon Valley, for instance, they own Facebook, they own Google, they own Amazon, they own Twitter, <clears throat> is they are controlling and suppressing the exposure of what they're doing. And here's a Google engineer this week. Uh, the headline says, Google engineer leaks nearly 1,000 pages of internal documents alleging bias and censorship. A former Google engineer has released nearly 1,000 pages of documents that he says prove that the company, at least in some of its products, secretly boosts or demotes content based on what it deems to be true or false while publicly claiming to be a neutral platform it's not what it deems to be true or false that's the that's the the way it looks <clears throat> it's what um, supports the agenda of the death cult which owns Google that's what it promotes and that which exposes the agenda of the death cult that's what it suppresses that's what it's really about not whether, um, you know, they say, oh, Google is political, it's following a political line. Well, it's not. It's following the death cult agenda line. And because the death cult also, for instance, um, owns Big Pharma, people who are challenging the vaccination agenda, devastating vaccination agenda of Big Pharma, they are um, suppressed and... Um, uh, often deleted by your Googles and your Facebooks. And YouTube, owned by Google. So the software engineer, Zach Voris, first provided the documents to Project Veritas, a investigative journalism non-profit, as well as the Justice Department's Antitrust Division, which has been investigating Google for potentially anti-competitive behaviour. What bloody kept them? And of course, these corporations like Google and Facebook are big um, financial donors to politicians on Capitol Hill. When um, Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, went to Capitol Hill to be questioned and sat there with his, his eyes on, a, you know, on stalks in absolute terror, because he don't run Facebook, therefore there's lots of questions he can't answer. Um, he was being questioned by politicians who take donations from Zuckerberg's company. It's unbelievable. Anyway, um, this engineer <clears throat> said, I thought that our election system was going to be compromised forever by this company that told the American public that it was not going to do any evil. And I saw that they were making really quick moves. They were intending to scope the information landscape so that they could create their own version of what was objectively true, from my perspective, um, to scope the information landscape to promote the death cult agenda and suppress exposure of the death cult agenda. Boris said he worked for Google for eight years, making $260,000 a year while counting in the gains from the Google stock he owns. Uh, I had every incentive, he said, in the world to stay at the company and just collect the paycheck. Um, and noting that many others would do that. But I could never live with myself knowing that. If Google was able to implement the plans that they were planning, that I, at the moment of choice, backed out because I was selfish. So good on him. It's what we need, more attitudes like this. Voris first came to Project Veritas more than a month ago, disclosing some documents and answering questions with his face hidden and his voice disguised. 
When he returned to work, however, Google sent him a letter demanding, among other things, that he turn over his employee badge and work laptop, which he did, and cease and desist from disclosing any non-public Google files. Afraid for his safety, he posted on Twitter that if something would happen to him, all the documents he took would be released to the public. These companies, you know, these, hey man, I'm a progressive man, they are absolute tyrannies. An example, Google, that, and this, is, this has been done to other people who've whistleblown Silicon Valley corporations. Google then did a wellness check on him, he said. The San Francisco police received a call that Voris may be mentally ill. A group of officers waited for him outside his house and put him in handcuffs. This is a large way in which they intimidate their employees that go rogue on the company, he said. Voris decided that it would be safer for him to go public. Absolutely right. If you've got something to reveal, reveal it publicly. Those that get taken out are overwhelmingly those who have something uh, that this cabal doesn't want out. And, and the most ridiculous thing of all, and I've seen this many times in my uh, 30 years doing this, that they say they're going to reveal something. And, um, you know, not in a book where it's already, by the time you say it, it's already uh, printed and uh, a fait accompli, but they're going to reveal it at some point. Um, and... What happens? Lots of them disappear, don't get, get taken out. If people um, have something of great importance that people need to hear and the cabal doesn't want them to hear it, going public and getting out there is 100 percent what um, what they need to do, because um, if someone puts something out and then something happens to them, well, there's a cause and effect. But if um, even more, they have something, but they don't put it out. Um, then most people won't know they had something to say of great relevance. And so it's just another person no longer with us. There is no cause and effect. The safest thing to do is to get it out there um, and pull no punches with it. Voris called Google a political machine bent on preventing anybody like President Donald Trump from getting elected again. He said there are other Google employees who see what's going on and they are really scared. Um, and uh, that is what they are supposed to be. These are despicable companies that are not controlled by those who are officially in charge. I mean, Zuckerberg runs Facebook. Bryn and Page run Google. I mean, please. And uh, another story. Have you noticed how social media purges always align with the US empire? Okay. Well, again, that's one level of looking at it. What the headline should really say, have you noticed how social media purges always align with the death cult agenda? That's, that's the truth. Uh, the story says Twitter has suspended multiple large Cuban media accounts for reasons the social media platform has yet to explain as of this writing, a move which journalist Dan Cohen has described as the equivalent of silencing CNN, Fox, The Washington Post, etc., for that nation. The Union of Cuban Journalists has denounced the move as censorship. Of course, that's what it is. Last month, we saw Twitter suspend hundreds of accounts, which it claims originated in mainland China, for engaging in covert manipulative behaviors against the Hong Kong protests, the Hong Kong protests being exactly what the cabal wants. Um, with Facebook and Google YouTube following suit in the creepy uniform coordination we've come to expect between these social media giants. Well, it's creepy coordination because they're all owned by the death cult. Um, 
It claims that, that they were associated with the governments of Iran, Russia and Venezuela. Oh, God. As well as 130 accounts reportedly tied to the Catalan independence movement in Spain. In May, uh, Twitter removed 2,800 of what it claimed were inauthentic accounts originating in Iran. Earlier this year, Twitter and Facebook coordinated with each other to remove hundreds of accounts they claim were tied to coordinated influence operations in Iran, Russia and Venezuela. Cuba, China, Russia, Iran, Venezuela and the Catalan independence movement, the article says and asks the question, noticing a pattern here. Yeah. There's obviously a pattern and there's obviously a reason for it, but it being a pattern of aligning with the U.S. empire is a smokescreen. The U.S. empire is a vehicle for the death cult. It's the death cult that it's aligning with.